stop, drop, and roll. It's John Anderson's Rally Speedway on 1200 XL, episode 14. Hi, everybody. Welcome to 1200 XL. And today, Aaron, we're going to be talking about John Anderson's oh, Rally man. Speedway. Yeah. Now, I know that you're not the world's biggest fan of auto racing, correct? I would say yes. I would say yes. I mean, there, I have gone through phases where I've enjoyed it more, but it, overall, not so mm -hmm. much. No. Now, if you had to pick of all the major types of auto racing, uh, which one is your favorite? If you discount Demolition Derby, uh, which I will, because I do love that. I, mm -hmm. I think I like those road races where they go, like, across the nation. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, a... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like Cannonball well, Run? So, yeah. I mean, kind of like that. They've actually got those, you know. Uh, uh, so, mm -hmm. I kind of like those. Uh, but r uh, rally race would be somewhere in the ballpark just because it's neat. They go all kinds of crazy places that cars normally wouldn't go. You know, it's also always been kind of mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I like, you know, I watched Ford versus Ferrari, that movie that came out a couple of years ago, all about the 24 hours of uh -huh. Le Mans. And uh, I thought that that was a really cool race. 24 hour race. That's yeah, wacky. that'd be tough. Um, I don't like F1. I don't like any sport, any racing that you can't do a little rubbing. Yeah. You know, that's 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 the West Virginia yeah. to me. You got to be able to brush up against, against your fellow component. Of course, if you do that in an F one car, it's instant death for everybody <laughs> they're involved. Made of, so. They're made of like paper <laughs> sticks and glue. You know, can <laughs> right, you imagine? Right. But we did a twelve hundred. We did a twenty four hour Amiga thon. All right, and at the mm -hmm. end of it, I, we were both absolute disasters. I mean, you, I was yeah. a grinning idiot. You were an angry, <laughs> angry man. Can you imagine the two yes. of us in a car for twenty four? We'd be dead a million times, boat. You know, it would be it would be the old Thelma and Louise ending. I can tell you that. <laughs> right off the cliff. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, boat. <laughs> well, let's talk, Aaron, about John Anderson and his Rally Speedway. Okay, so this is a game. From way, way back in 1983. I was doing good in 1983. I was two years old. Oh, man. Uh, this was published by an outfit called Adventure International. And uh, you wouldn't think uh, a publisher called Adventure International would publish games like this that were not yeah. adventure games. But, lo, they did. Um, of course, they were most famous for, as you can probably guess, uh, adventure games. This is the company that was founded by Scott and Alexis Adams back in 1979. Oh, yes. uh, they formed the company on the success of the their first adventure game for computers. The first text adventure game, some say, for computers, uh, which was called Adventureland, which was actually released the year before in 1978. Mm. But Adventure International did release uh, some additional titles outside of the adventure genre. They released uh, the official port of Lunar Lander, huh. Aaron, was released That's through wacky. them. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, a couple golf games, uh, Maxi Golf, Sunday Golf. Uh, I've not played either of those, but, you know, we're both fans of, of yeah. golf games. So uh, I'll have to check those out. And Preppy, which I, I remember from my discs back in my I youth. I forgot all about uh, that. Preppy. I'll be honest. <laughs> Preppy is, is a really good clone of yeah. Frogger. Really good clone of Frogger. So uh, they, they did some other stuff. Uh, of course, their big, their bread and butter was their uh, Adventure International series of games, where it would be like Castle Castle Adventure 6. You know, they'd have these, you know, there would be 13 of these things, you know, like sequels based in the same universe. And these things sold tons and tons and tons of copies. Uh, so, yeah, they were a big deal publisher back in the day. Now, John Anderson Rally Speedway was written by, you guessed it, Mr. John yeah, Anderson. I was a little sad to learn that it is not the lead singer of Yes. <laughs> I always hoped, I always hoped that he dabbled a little in See, programming. I, I thought, but that's sadly I not thought the Rally case. When I first, before I started research this, I was there, I never thought about it. And the funny thing is, it comes up right mm -hmm. in the middle of the game on the Atari version. But I thought John Anderson was like some kind of big time rally racer. <laughs> you know, sort of like <laughs> he does have a rally yeah, racer it's, type it's, name. What, you know, right, sort of like right. the, we've seen plenty of other games where the, the, they put a famous racer's name at the front. So I was, I, it's kind of neat yeah. that he got top billing in his own game. 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, John Anderson, just a little background about him. He is he's from Florida. I think he's pretty much lived his whole life in Florida. Um, and uh, he he first bought an Apple II. His first computer was an Apple II. Um, and uh, he, actually, he says that he originally had a, a Bally Astrocade, but of course the programming was limited right. on the old Astrocade. We covered out know. an ARG. They had some pretty good stuff. <laughs> That's man, right. All things considered. That's right. Um, but, uh, so anyway, he, uh, he, uh, he, he got an Apple II and he started writing games. Okay. Uh, the first game that he got was, uh, uh, the first game that he wrote was a clone of Defender called The Eliminator. The Eliminator. Um, and, uh, he, he, uh, he tried to get this thing published. He sent it to Sierra, uh, and, uh, they offered him the, uh, they offered him a job working there, but he'd have to move to California. Oh. And uh, and he he's a Florida boy. He he didn't want to move away from Florida, so he said no, thank you. And uh, he uh, he basically he walked over to a local computer store that was owned by Scott Adams. <laughs> and uh, and and so yeah, and so he went to Scott Adams Computer Store, and uh, there was uh, the the worker there, maybe the manager there. His name was Dan Horn. He asked uh, he asked Scott if if he wanted to see this game. Scott said, yeah. And, uh, and, and, that, and that's how he started uh, writing games for adventure international. <laughs> that is crazy. That what a wacky tale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, I just walked over to Steve Wozniak's computer disc yeah. service. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, John wrote three games on the Apple II. He wrote Elim the eliminator. He wrote a game called rear guard mm. and sea dragon. And I know you and I have played yeah. sea dragon, not on the Apple II, but yeah. on the Coco. So, um, and uh, so he switched at that point. He sort of saw that the Apple II was kind of limited in terms of what it could do with games. And he decided to move to the Atari platform just because he thought it was a better platform to develop Correct. games on. Uh, he, he bought an Atari 800, used that for development. And uh, he went on to produce one more game called A-Rex. And uh, then after that, he actually got a job, as so many of these guys do, working for uh, the Defense Department and making actual real money doing simulations and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, and so uh, that is a little bit about John Anderson. Well so um, where where did Rally Speedway come from? Where did the idea germinate? Well, it actually germinated from a game on the Intellivision, Aaron, one of our favorite consoles. Yeah. Uh, there's a game called Auto Racing on there. Um, in auto racing, you are playing the uh, the, the same sort of uh, positional driving as you are in Rally Speedway. It's a top-down position. Uh, you're looking at the car directly ahead, above, a bird's eye view. It's sort of like Micro Machines, if you want to compare it to something really yeah. famous. And uh, you're just sort of moving along the line, yeah. you know. It's um, slow. And so he <laughs> Boy, was. Is that slow. Yeah, it's yeah. slow. He was, uh, he was inspired by auto racing. He liked the fact that the game presented an aesthetically pleasing environment. In auto racing, you're driving around a city and you see some greenery, you see some houses and things like that. And he wanted to do the same thing, just update it, make it faster, make it more fun, and make it for the Atari 8-bit. And that's where, uh, that's where Rally Speedway came from. So... Rally Speedway. Now, uh, Aaron, before we get started, uh, had you played Rally Speedway before? Absolutely. With you. <laughs> I think you're the first person that showed <laughs> it to me. I, I may have played this back in my uh, in my early days with the Atari, back when I was babysitting. It's possible, uh, but it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not 100% sure. But I definitely, me and you have played it. In fact, uh, we I knew about it because of you, because you actually did an Amigos play on this long ago. In fact, mm -hmm. we're looking at your. If anyone's watching the video, this is boat playing uh, right now, uh, and uh, uh, so I, you had given me the, a good taste of this back back early on. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this game is essentially um, a a. They call it a rally race, but it's different than what you consider to be a, a modern rally game because you don't get the uh, you don't get the arrows on the screen that tell you when it's no, time to no, turn. No, you don't. Um, what you do get in this game is a is a is a course that takes you through a twisty, turny route in between. There's there's woods, there's water, there's some houses, and your job is to just direct your car and go lap after lap after lap, trying to get the fastest lap that you can. Uh, that that is essentially the game. Um, now, this is a one or two player title. 
Uh, when you play in two-player mode, of course, there's no, there's no split screen. What they do is they put both cars on the screen at the same time, and if one car crashes, uh, both cars stop. Both cars are reset on the track in, the, in about the same spot where the crash occurred, and the, the car that crashes takes a 10-second penalty. Um, honestly, I don't think that's a bad way to do it. I think that that's, that's much better than doing what other games do. I'm thinking about a professional ski simulator on the ZX <laughs> yes. Spectrum where you're literally just left behind yes. and you're, you're, you're driving blind to try and catch up with the other guy. Um, this is, this is a much better way to do things. Um, now speaking of crashing yes. and burning, this is probably one of the most fun games to crash in because when you crash your car, it's engulfed in a fiery inferno and your man in his, uh, in his crash suit rolls out of the car still on fire. Uh, he, he rolls out of the car. Of course, he's stopped dropping and rolling. He, 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 he manages to put out the flames, and then he shakes his fist at the car in a threatening yeah. manner when he, when he, when he gets and out he of the com- car. He comes out of the car in different ways. Sometimes he t- rolls mm-hmm. sideways. Sometimes he does like a, a front roll. Sometimes he just runs mm-hmm. out of the car. And he's, sometimes he's not on fire that much. Sometimes he's on fire a lot. But it always ends with him going like, giving it the arm. <laughs> it's, just, that's, it's a great <laughs> yeah. visual. It's great. Um, this game is, uh, it, it offers you uh, a couple different types of uh, surface that you can drive on. You can drive on the normal road. You can drive on a wet road. You can drive on an icy road. Uh, this does not actually change the look not of the bit. track. <laughs> However, it changes the, you know, the, 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 the traction yeah. that you have. So it's, it's, it's sort of the built-in difficulty level. Um, you also have the ability, and this is the killer feature of this game, is there is a track editor built right in right into the game. So you can actually use all of the assets in the game, all of the tiles to construct your own track. Uh, the, the editor is, uh, it's, 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 de- it's not exactly drag and drop like you might expect from a modern game, but I can figure it out. And, uh, and so, uh, and so if I can figure it out, you can probably figure it out. So, uh, it's, it's, it's a neat feature. Um, now Aaron, what, what did you think of Rally Speedway? You know, you did, I want to talk about the actual gameplay of this a little bit because mm-hmm. this has got a unique concept that we, and you and it really you can the options on this are sort of important because you get a ton of options here mm-hmm. uh, one or two players the tight road conditions then you get an option where you play like real life or like only the computer what that means is you just run, nothing kills you you just go through woods houses everything and you can literally just get in the car just drive around the map which is mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. It's great. It's it's great that yeah. they put that in. It's like a cheat mode built then you've in. You've got the top speed allowed, uh, and what this <laughs> this game is odd. It'll actually the the but did you talk about how you stop and go and no that yeah that that's actually a really important thing. This so this game uh, has no acceleration. Yeah. <laughs> like once you start, yes. you're going. You're going full speed. Okay, and you you push uh, up and down, I believe. No, it's left and right. You push left and right to guide your car to the left or the right. Your button acts as yes. your brake. Okay, and so one of the options, as you just said, is is to set your top speed. So if you set your top speed at a hundred, you're going to be going so fast that I mean, you're going to be using your brake constantly yeah. in that. Uh, and so you know, it, it just depends on. But again. You know, the better you get, if you're going for that best time, you want to get the fastest car and do the best you can. But it's it's one of those it's one of those great things about great games where it's so well balanced. You have to make the choice of you know, do you want to get a lower top speed, use less of the brake, maybe crash less and get a faster time, or do you want to push your luck and go for that higher? I don't top think speed? I've ever seen a game that that had the gas always pressed to the floor and you control the brake. Mm-hmm. And you would think to yourself, this mm-hmm. is moronic, but it actually is makes it fun. And I'll, I mean, I. Yeah, I, I've never played anything like that. And I think that's neat, and the fact that you can also, mm-hmm. the, the, aside from the top speed, you can also set how fast that the car speeds up. Like if you've got it on right. fast, it's like a, a, a Lamborghini, like zero to a hundred, like two seconds. But if you've got it on mm-hmm. slow, it takes a while. And in a race course like the one that it comes with, you're kind of going to want to. I don't think I'd want to accelerate that fast. You certainly don't want to go at top speed. And so when you're learning to play the game. You can turn the acceleration uh, low and play at the low speed, and you can actually go through and and, kind of play and not instantly get murdered, you know? So it actually has a built-in self-controlled learning curve. I mean, Boat called it. All you do in this is just go around getting lap times. That's it. Mm -hmm. Uh, Unless you're playing with your buddy, in which case you ram each other while you try to get your lap times and and laugh. (laughs) 
Uh, but uh, I like the I like the control element. If the controls are tight on this thing. Uh, the the car uh, moves at a good clip. It's not. I mean, it goes fast when it's supposed to, but it, you know, the, it goes at the right speed uh, for me. Uh, the the uh, surrounding environment are neat. You come past all these houses. I think to me, I can picture a neighborhood like the one you drive through in this. Lots of trees, lots of little lakes, and then lots of people with swimming pools and big houses everywhere. And mm-hmm. it's neat to think that you're sitting in a, a, a swimming pool somewhere and a rally car just drives about 100 mile an hour. <laughs> going, and all it just went into the lake and there's a guy on fire. And this could all be... <laughs> I'll be out there while you're sitting in your pool, man. Uh, so I thought that was neat. You know, I, I, it'd be interesting to wonder, to wonder why he didn't choose a city or, or a, a, a more... I mean, it's an odd choice for the track. I guess it's not. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what he was going for. But, I mean, it's neat to go to see all the what he's got lying around. That makes I think that's a big part yeah. of the game. Well, in a way, you know, it reminds me of Getaway, in a way. Because Getaway had yeah. the same sort of tiles. You know, your lake yeah, tiles, absolutely. your tree tiles and stuff. So, uh, uh, yeah. Didn't the Getaway guy say that he had been... This was one of his inspirational pieces, wasn't it? Yeah. I think so. I think so. I mean, how could it not yeah. have been? Um, now... Um, now this game sold well. Um, it did not sell in the numbers that that John thought it would. Uh, in fact, this was sort of both this and Arex. This, of course, was coming up around the time where things really started to go south in the computer industry here in the yeah. United States, and um, and uh, and so he decided that he just wasn't able to make the kind of money he wanted to make just writing games, and that's what. But he did say that it sold, you know, sort of well. Um, I could not find any reviews. Uh, of of uh, of this in in magazines of the day, and of course, as you know, um, a lot of the Atari magazines back in the day um, weren't didn't didn't give scores. You know, they didn't they didn't give eighty seven percent or anything like that. So uh, I wasn't able to find any uh, any scores, but I can I can't imagine this wouldn't. I mean, this would have had to have, have scored pretty well, don't well, you think? Well, I know it's it's remembered quite fondly. If I if I'm not mistaken, the uh, Atari Age, I believe, put out a 5200 version of this uh, uh, that's been released in the past. You know, how many years? But I saw it out there. I saw the boxes for it. It's funny that this only got released uh, in for the C64 and for the Atari. You would think that this would have gotten. I would have tried to have gotten this out to a lot of different. Uh, you know consoles and computers yeah. today uh, because i think it's yeah it's because i mean you could have easily you could have translated this easily to almost anything now i know that there was a java uh, port of this that was under development in the early 2000s i did some i did some hunting around i had to go through the old uh, internet wayback machine to find information about it unfortunately it seems like development was stopped in 2007 but it, it did look cool it looked like they were trying to implement a full multiplayer mode and things mm-hmm. like that but uh, as far as I know, that is the only fan-made thing, and 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 Rally Speedway just seems to have, have faded into the past. Have, have uh, I believe did did we both together try the C sixty four version of this boat? I remember trying it. It seems like you were there. Do you remember? It's possible. It's possible. I uh, just for fun, I grabbed uh, some video of it and I grabbed the video of the Atari here. And if you're watching the video, uh, we've got them side by side. Uh, I've played the C64 version of this, and I've played, of course, the Atari. And I, I, I mean, you can see that the uh, C64 guy's got his top speed up, and and there are some flourishes on the C64 version that the Atari version doesn't have. But I will say, I thought the Atari version played a lot better than the C64. Because mm. uh, so your mileage may vary, but it's neat if you and if you're a, a C64 enthusiast, it'd be one to hunt hunt out and try. Uh, the the fact yeah. that you've got the uh, the uh, track editor. Uh, I you know I I wonder if there's a bunch of awesome tracks out there somewhere that would be that would be kind of neat to play different people's uh, tracks. I don't think I've ever played any one except for the one you know the one that came with it. So that might be kind of fun too. Uh, but I don't I would never try to make my own. <laughs> it looked too complicated yeah, for me. Yeah. <laughs> now we did get a single Discord review on this game. It came to us from Mitsuyama. He says uh, this game is presented well with a colorful title screen and a menu that has lots of options. The sound is minimal with just the engine noise plus some tire screeches as you skid around the corners. The graphics are nice, although the car does look a little like a tractor. And it would have been nice if the road had different colors to represent the different conditions, like dry, wet, and icy. He says, the crash animation is fantastic. Your car bursts into flames and John dives from the wreckage on fire and rolls to the floor to put the flames out. 
The handling of the car feels great, and it's very satisfying when you successfully negotiate a series of corners without losing too much speed. However, I found the gameplay a little lacking. The one-player game needs a CPU-controlled opponent to race against, as I found just endlessly completing laps trying to beat my fastest time eventually became boring. I guess the two-player game is where the most fun is, but I never got a chance to try this. Including a track editor is a nice bonus that adds some longevity to the game. Good review from Mitsuyama. Yeah, I, I, you know this this game in some ways. This you know we I had games for the Odyssey that would just go on forever, right? You just play them and mm -hmm. and, then, and you would play for speed. And this sort of is like in in gameplay. This is sort of a throwback. Where and it wouldn't be that far to throw. I might add. This is kind of a game that straddles two different. Uh, uh, times in gaming where they had the, the, the he made it more complicated more uh beautiful you know and, and added a bunch of cool options but the actual gameplay is very much uh you know eight bit old eight bit game style gameplay and so uh you mm -hmm. you would think that a sequel to this that if, if what had ever been made could have been a quite a quite an interesting uh undertaking to see what he could have done with it if he kind of left some of that old school gaming uh, behind and tried to you know spice it up and make it a real fast action packed racer. Yeah, yeah, I've always loved games where you're you know you're pushing your luck and you're trying to uh, you're trying to do the best you can uh, just to get around the track. And so this is um, this is definitely one that that I come back to over and over. Whenever I fire up my my twelve hundred XL, uh, this is always a game yeah, that I play. It's good for so, at least ten minutes uh, of fun. That's for darn sure. Yeah, yeah, I did look this up on the eBay. Uh, you can get a cart only version of this for about fifty bucks, forty four ninety nine. If you want a complete, uh, actually, this is just with the manual. If you want the cart and the manual, seventy nine. No box copies exist on eBay, and as far as I can tell, have been sold in in a yeah. long time. So uh, it's a pretty expensive title, but you know these Atari carts are getting more and more expensive as time Indeed. goes on. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Well, as we close this out, we want to remind you that we do produce this show uh, once a month. And if you enjoy it, feel free to uh, head on over to patreon.com slash 1200XL. If you'd like to throw us a couple bucks every month, we'd sure appreciate it. And uh, we do record the show live on Twitch once a month over at twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. So now, Aaron, next week, next month, when a 1200XL returns... Uh, we had our first 1200XL game selection committee vote, okay? And uh, we had our Discord community. Uh, everybody that supports any of our shows at the $10 a month level gets to vote on any of our game selection committees. And so uh, we had a vote for uh, games in the adventure slash RPG category. And the one and only Paul, a.k.a. Hermski, nominated a game called School Days, Aaron. School days. Interesting. That we are going to play. Is this uh, 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 the game that was also on the ZX? That's oh. correct. This is a newly ported uh, version of the ZX Spectrum Classic for the Atari 8 bit okay. computer. All right. That'll be interesting. Yeah. That sounds good, man. Yeah. Yeah. So we will be back next month with school days. And until then, make sure you Your play. Atari today.